The following message was given by Brother Denny Keniston at Charity Christian Fellowship on Sunday, April 22, 2012. Brother Denny had recently been diagnosed as having a stage 4 cancerous tumor of the brain, and this message was given in much weakness and labor. He was driven in from Indiana by his son Daniel, with a heavy burden to share with the local congregation at Charity concerning some of the matters that the Lord had laid on his heart for us. Good morning and greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. The one we've been worshiping and adoring in our worship service together. Welcome to each one here today. We are thankful for your presence here with us on this very special occasion. To the Keniston family, I just want to welcome you and bless you all for coming to share together in this experience with us. We are honored that you would come to be here today to share together. And uh, we are looking forward to what God will do here today. You know, God's ways are so much higher than our ways. We didn't call for this meeting, but our almighty God has called for this time, such a time as this. And I believe that God has a divine purpose and he has a will and a heart in all that happens here today and from this day forth. And God makes all things beautiful in his time We have been so blessed and humbled how the Lord has been working amongst us and showing us our needs and humbling our hearts and granting us grace and faith to believe God. And we don't know what all God will yet do, but we know that our God is an awesome God and he makes no mistakes. Hallelujah. Just a few words from Psalm, very familiar Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, and he leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, so be it, Lord. Can we stand together for prayer? Our Father in heaven, we do bless you. We do praise you. We stand in awe before you, Lord. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the Son of Man that thou visitest him. O Lord, we confess our need of you here today. And we beseech your mercies, O God, that you would visit us, Lord. Visit your people in this our day. And grant us your mercies. Grant us your grace. Grant us, Father, to see the spiritual things that you want to show us, Lord. Grant us to see our Lord Jesus Christ, high and lifted up and exalted, Lord of lords and King of kings. Father, we ask in Jesus' name that you would bless and sanctify every part of this service, Lord. Jesus Christ, Lord over all, Oh, Father, do bless our brother Denny. 
anointing with the Holy Ghost and unction from heaven. Oh, Father, we pray for the Spirit of Christ Jesus to be mightily upon him. The same Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead, quickening his mortal body, that he may be able to communicate the things that you're laying on his heart. Give him utterance, Lord, and clarity of mind and thought to bring it forth. And then, Lord, grant our hearts to be open to receive what you want to say to me, to us all together. Lord, we trust you because you're our father. We are your children bought by blood. We are thine, O Lord. Father, do speak to us. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Well, we have a little surprise, I was told, for Brother Denny this morning. Some of the grandchildren want to sing a song for Papa Grandpa. So, children, you may come and just stand on these uh, steps here and we'll look forward to that. Amen. Well, we are the children, and I think we are grand. (laughs) Um, We actually want to sing a song um, that's very special to Papa, and that's been special to all of us over the years. Um, You know, we have been amazed this past week and this past month um, just seeing Papa rise above everything that he's been facing, and we like to sing a song. Um, we might not be as good as we once were. We haven't practiced this for maybe, I don't know, ten, more than ten years. But you know what we're singing? <laughs> There's a place of quiet resting far above the noise and din of life's tests and raging battles and the devil's words you sing. Here with eagle wings unfolded, resting sweetly in my Lord, I am resting in the sunshine, where the eagle saints have soared. Resting in the sweet, resting in the Lord, resting in the sweetest of the Lord, resting in the Lord, from Spread your wings abroad. Rest in heaven, sunshine, with Jehovah God. There's a place where peace and comfort flood my soul with healing balm. When my dearest hopes are shattered up, I rise to where it is calm. Here the light of his dear presence quite illuminates my way and reveals my hidden treasure, listening in the glory ray. Oh, the 
dark in clouds and spread your wings abroad. Rest in heaven, sunshine with Jehovah God. Amen. Thank you for sharing that lovely hymn song of rising above with the Lord Jesus and resting in his presence. All right, we're going to uh, give opportunity for Brother Denny to share. And while they uh, arrange and, uh, you know, come forward for that, let us all stand together as a congregation and sing that little hymn, Be Still and Know That I Am God. And during that hymn, uh, Denny, and you can go ahead and be prepared. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I talk. This, I must admit it's a bit overwhelming here to see all of your faces. So I'm just, you give me a couple of minutes to get, get a hold of myself and all the lovely singing and the nice song. It was so sweet. But it takes me a minute to catch up. Can you just Give me a moment here. I, I'm, I'm a, a little weak, so my voice might sound a little funny. But um, yeah, but through the night, God was assuring my heart. I was a little trembling to come, and God was. Encouraging my heart through the night. Denny, you, you be who you are. I'll help you. I'll help you to know what to say. So I just had to work through that a little in my heart for a moment. But, um, but I'm, I'm here. As you, I'm sure you can tell, I'm, I'm a bit weak, but I, I want you to know that I, I'm here.
cost you. So that's why I'm here. I know God wanted me to say that. But I also wanted I want to say this. This is a solemn assembly. And I thought about it through the night because I, I, I am who I am and I can say things that somebody might like to hear. But I want to warn us. <laughs> Principality of pride has so destroyed our young people in this land of ours. And I don't want us to get light about anything. This is a solemn assembly that God has called us together here. But I do want to say this to you all of you because I know that you're wrestling with many issues I know you are I know that that the character of God is at stake in all of this but I want to let you know I want to put your heart at ease this morning this is not this is not about cancer dear people of God this is not about chastisement not at all. Listen to me. I'm having the time of my life. Don't you feel sorry for me. I'm having a ball. And I don't want to make that light. But listen. Put your shovels away. Just put your shovels away. And don't get light now. Don't get light here. This is a solemn assembly. So just put your shovels away, okay? I came here to slay a giant, and I plan to have his head in my hand when I'm done. I mean that. That's why I'm here. Okay. my elders in Bern Christian Fellowship admonished me that I I told them what God was putting on my heart that I needed to do and they they admonished me a bit don't, don't just go get up there and and blubber a bit and send me general statements you be specific brother Denny about things that you need to confess and that's why I'm here. I'm I am I know that I am your covering elder. I'm your father. I know that. And I and when fathers fail, they have to face their responsibility and that's why I'm here. Because I know that some of my failures, you, dear people, have been devastated and the enemy has been licking his chops to get at you and destroy the testimony of the Lord. And we're not going to let him do that. So I'm here as a father. I've been your father and you're very dear to me, every one of you and Daniel. Daniel brought me here this morning to just to walk around in the building. You know, I I did that many years in this building, walking around in here. And so Daniel brought me here, and I just walked around in the auditorium. It was it was so heavenly just to walk and remember how many times I walked down that one and saying, oh, God, give me something for the people this morning. They're coming, Lord. They're going to come. They're coming. I, I want to give them something. And so Daniel brought me here and I walked around in here. Oh, wow, it was so sweet. It brought so many tender memories to my own heart. And I, yeah, I, I need to keep myself on. I know that. It's, it's your fault. You're so sweet and loving, I can't shut up. But, but 
it's your fault, but I'm going to stick. I'm here on assignment, so you just bear with me. I'll, I'll come along. Give me a moment here. <clears throat> that was said. That's good. Yes, I want to. I want to. God help. I actually can use these notes you made, sweetheart. What a blessed lady. <laughs> Listen. Thank you, Father. Don't do anything. Don't. Nothing. Okay. Young people. Young people. Yes. Young people. My dear young people, I know that God wanted me to come and apologize to you young people. I know that we've been many through many difficult things and, and I know that in some of those things I, my own heart attitude was not right at times. With you, I know. I know you saw the light go out of my eye when I looked at you at times. I know you saw my eye. You saw me looking at you with not a good look. I know that it hurt you. When things started going up into my heart attitude I in my own pride I didn't respond in humility for God to give me grace and because of that my attitudes were not good at times and I know you young people and you young you sensed it and I know that it hurt you should say I because I have gotten a glimpse of, of the holy c- c- character of God <laughs> so jealous over his <laughs> so jealous over his that I didn't do it. I know that. I'm very sorry. But my, my heart sincerely wanted God's need to be protected his reputation. But I know that I messed it up. I'm so sorry. I meant well, sincerely. I meant well. Yeah, I felt God wanted. 
didn't mean to say that. Because, because it's, it's so high. It's so much higher. <laughs> so yeah. I don't think we realize what we do to his name. So I don't want to get preachy here. I'm not a preacher this morning. I'm a confessor. Yeah, good. Okay. Yes. I want to say this to the congregation. I want to confess the, uh, that I and probably Mama have, we made some very dangerous moves at times because of the home series and all of that and gave in to some family pride and I abhor the thought that we would think such a thought but you know you lift that thing up you know this is the godly home and I just abhor the thought and some of the pressures that that we went through, you know how my beloved elders stood beside me and they admonished me and they said some strong words to me and I, I kissed their hands that they would love me enough to say those strong words to me that they would even reach beyond their respect for their father and tell me what I needed to hear. I want to honor them for having enough courage to get tough with Brother Denny when they knew that he needed to hear. And I bless you, Brother Aaron and Brother Emmanuel, for talking to me that way. That is a kindness that you did that, and I thank you for it. I thank you. I receive it very much. But I want to just give this report because they have they admonished me many times and you know we we left here with a goal in our heart to somehow that we would draw our hearts together and that God would work in such a good way to heal our marriage. And I'm here to tell you that God has our marriage far be anything I ever, ever dreamed that I, I can't even begin to say it if I God has done so, so many things this little angel standing next to me. She cares for me. She carried me out here like a mother, carried a little baby all the way across Pennsylvania, 
washing my little feet, putting my socks on. And the dependency of all of this has done something inside of our heart that you, I couldn't measure it. But I tell you, and you already know this, you know it, but I, I've had some jealousy in my heart over this little lady over here. I, I, I've had that, and I, I, she's had some tough times. She has because I've been jealous of her, and, and because everyone wants her. But I, I know why you want her because she's so sweet. But, but, uh, but she's mine. <laughs> mine. <laughs> So that I want to stick on here and God help me. But but that that jealousy, that wicked jealousy, that brought much pain and confusion to this lovely lady. But we I have repented of all of that. I I cherish my wife. I mean those verses who I read those verses many times, but I know what those verses mean. Lay down his life for his wife. I know that verse very deeply. So, just know that, brothers and sisters, that I have been admonished by the elders and very done very well. I, I, I receive that in humility from them as God's hand of love watching over this man who needed to be directed. Divine young in public ministry. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes I want to I do want to, I want to, I want to stand behind the elders here. I, if you could see what's happening, oh dear church and young people, I just want to stand beside these elders and what they're wanting to do and their burden to guide this church. They walk just a moment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so. Just, I just want to underline that. That to each one of you here, because I know, I know what, I do know, I'm telling you, I know what God is going to do here. You, you stand by those men. I know what God's going to do. They need you. They need your support. You, you, you let them guide you. They know what they're doing and they know where they're going. I'm giving, I'm giving you that, yes. All right, I want to speak. I want to speak just a little bit about public ministry. Just got a babysit me a little bit here. Okay. This is a very important area that God has been dealing deeply with my own heart in this whole area of public ministry ministry and I know that I failed you all and I know that I allowed many and maybe some of you to to put me in a position that is was not good and actually a very dangerous position. I had no idea what I was allowing, but I know that I let you do that to me and I'll never do it again. I mean that. 
I, I mean that with all of my heart. You try to do that to me, I'll run away. You'll never see me again. Mm. But God dealt very deeply about that, uh, that pride that creeps in there, you know, and getting oh, hurt. Yes, I want to. I want to bring this out before you, brothers and sisters, that I, that I, out of all the many pressures and demands of ministry, I, and and the things that you know, all the cost in that, you can't get home, and the children you haven't seen them, and all those things, I allowed those pressures. Uh, uh, t- of ministry to to settle in my heart and resentment uh, came into my heart and, and of course you can't minister to people if you're looking at them and they're just a, you know a, a drain and and the resentment of that I I didn't respond I should have humbled myself and and fell on my face and 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 had asked God to help me but instead that resentment started to work inside of my heart and and then 
And then I, that made me stronger. You know, oh God, this thing isn't going right. I'm going to straighten it out one way or another. And, and I know that you suffered under that. But I, I just wanted you to know that God has dealt with those things. I'm going to need to walk. Yes, this is the word that God spoke to my heart. Rivalry. Rivalry. As the church began to grow and we got full and you know how it is and it's time to start another church and it's time we believe in multiplication and we're excited we're going to have a bigger church and spread out and all those things but when all of that started happening and I started hearing hearing um, these kind of words you know coming from Ephrata and I'm not saying anyone did anything wrong no it's a very natural thing for people to uh, we have a new char- church and we're going for it and, but I started hearing those words we're going to we're going to have we're going to be the bigger church we're at Ephrata and we're going to go for it and I started hearing those words and all oh, those seeds settle down into my heart and I start thinking, oh, you are not going to have the bigger church. We will. We will do something about that. And that poison. God, you, my heart. And many motivations that lie underneath there. Hurt you. And I'm very sorry for giving you to some of that. Very sorry. Please forgive me. It seems so stupid, so human. I'm very sorry. But I want you to know why all this devastation. So, because the character of God is at stake. God is still who He is. He can be loved and trusted completely. But you don't just go do something that you think you should do. The results don't come out right. And I am an example of that and I'm here to tell you that I sinned giving in to those manly things that men do. You know, us men were aggressive and all those things but I have repented of that thoroughly you won't find any of that in my heart I need to walk you just bear with me okay Yes, about the character of God. Yes, I, I'll see that, son. Yes, I. Um, I, I don't want. I don't want this to sound mystical, because it's not. But you know, when Isaiah saw the Lord there in Isaiah six, he he saw the Lord. You know, but I haven't seen the Lord. I'm not standing here, but. But somehow, 
through all this that I've been through. The, the, the holy character of God is written on my heart. And it's not like I'm seeing him off somewhere. I just, I just see him. I don't know. We got time, right? We can just relax and just. Yeah. This is good to say. Just relax. Because the body is a little weak, it it wants to tremor, you know, and cramp. Not a good thing. Anything, Lord. We were talking about the character of God. And the searching of your life. Yeah, I do. Guess it. No, I don't want to talk about me. I don't want to talk about me at all. Only that, that I have a. You know, Paul says that God, we see him and he writes on the table of the heart. And it's like God has written his holy character on my heart. And therefore, my eyes aren't the same. I don't see the same thing anymore. I just see God's lovely character. I see you. I just see God on you. That's what I see. It just, it's so, it's so beautiful. But it has put such vehement jealousy for his, his name. <laughs> fly away if I do that. I mean it. I mean it. Uh, but I, I, want to, I want to give you a word of encouragement. Because you know, I know that your church, I know, and your young people, I know you've been discouraged. It's probably me. This left hand, it doesn't always do what I want, but I'm training it. So, <laughs> But I, I am, um, my heart my heart is so full of encouragement of what God what wants to do. Oh, you, you, you wait. Oh, my dear people, you wait. You just, you just walk. You walk in this, what you are tasting, you walk here. God, God will do something very beautiful. He will honor His name, but don't be discouraged. Don't let the enemy lie to you anymore. He's been lying. Oh, he's been doing all he can. He's been licking his chops, setting this one up, but you know what? He's finished. And you already know that, don't you? You already know. I don't need to tell you that. He's already finished. But... I want to leave that encouragement to you to just just be encouraged. Lift up your eyes unto God. Everything's going to be fine. God knew all of this. He, 
He lovingly allowed all these difficulties and pains to come upon us. And you know too, we've been a proud charity church. You know that. We've been pretty proud about our church. And God in His loving kindness allowed all this pain and difficulty to come to us, to heal us. And He will. It's going to be okay. It'll be fine. Just as long as we stay right. Right here and let God have his holy, exalted place. And we just stay right here. Stay right here. No show. No ostentation. Nothing. None of that. And God is going to be glorified like you never, ever dream. I know that. It is in my heart. He won't let me sleep. I can't sleep. I can't. It overwhelms my heart in the night. But I'm telling you, I'm just coming along to letting you know all those lies is out the window. Let them be gone. Those are just a bunch of lies. Yes, just a bunch of lies. Yes, I want to share that. Thank you, dear. I do want to share the healing that is coming to our family. And I know, I know how many times you prayed for us. And I thank you very much to pray for us. I know, I know that you prayed, but I want you to know that God was hearing your prayers. And the healing that is coming to our home is so beautiful. I just stand in awe as I see the mysterious, you find, mysterious working of God's Spirit among each one of us. It's so beautiful. We just, we just gather together like a magnet. We can't stay away from each other just to be together. It's so Miraculous to see how God could take a shattered family and heal and bring it, bring it together in such beauty and love and order. I'm here to tell you, if you have a shattered family, there's healing on the way, dear, dear longing heart. There's healing on the way. And it's, it's not a physical thing. It's God. It's God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. There's one thing I need to confess, yes. That God told me in the night I need to confess. You know that. This goes back a little in history, but we're the family, right? We've been through a lot, but... Back there, some years ago, that some of the I allowed some of the controversy and healing that kind of came on among us, and and there were some strong concerns, and they were right, they were right concerns. I'm not faulting anyone, but those things kind of happened among us, and and um, some strong words were given to me, and uh, again here's. And that devilish pride, you know, started to creep in. You know, I thought, oh, they're they're saying that Brother Denny's a charismatic now, and and I, that, the pride of my own heart said, oh, I better slow down here. I better back this thing off. I'm gonna lose my name. Amen. But I I compromised in my heart. And you, you probably have been in some confusion as a congregation because I backed away from those pressures. And I'm just, I'm just here to confess that that was sin that was moving in me. And I have repented of that. And it's I'm not talking, it's not about healing. This is way beyond some teaching in the Bible. It's way beyond that. But... I want you to know that I, 
I compromised there. I, I should have been a good, strong leader and humbled myself before God that I could have in grace be able to guide us through that. And instead, I just kind of went into the corner and slowed down and quieted down. I'm repenting of that before you, brothers and sisters. I'm repenting. That is God. I'm clearing my heart. Forgive me for not being strong when I should have. Forgive me. Yes. Thank you, Lord. He told me in the night, I'll take care of you, son. Don't worry about what you're going to say. I'll guide you. So I'm just... We're going. It's good that I sat down. My wife, she thought, I should stand up there so I'm, I'm so consumed with making her happy. <laughs> that I, but it's better. My body relaxes a little if I can sit. If I do it this way. That's good. Okay. Oh, we have sat in heavenly places this morning. Thank you, Lord. Brother Denny, I just want to thank you and bless you for sharing with us this treasure, the example that you have given to us of repentance and confession. Thank you, Brother Denny. And I bear responsibility with you in some of those things you shared touched my heart very deeply. And I also say to the congregation that I know that I have failed in different areas and I just want the Lord Jesus Christ to be exalted in my life and for me to be dead to sin and self. And I want to say, Brother Denny, you have blessed me over the years and I appreciate all the things that you've shared with me concerning admonitions and encouragements in the right way and I receive that with gratitude and I love you brother and care for you deeply and we are so blessed to see this day of God's moving by his spirit in your heart and in the heart of your family and we stand in awe before the Lord at his goodness his mercy just want to give opportunity for some of the elders here to share with you, Brother Denny. Uh, I think Brother Aaron has said it very well. Uh, I don't feel like I need to say very much, but uh, we love you. We know you love us. And it's been a joy to be your friend and to fight together. If, it, if you don't get knocked down, it's not even fun. I mean that, a good soldier. Hey, if you don't get kicked around, you didn't even have a fight. Thank you, Brother Denny, for sharing today. and I just uh, praise God for His work. and just want you to know that I forgive you. I forgive you. I love you. Thank you. And I, and I also ask for your forgiveness for putting you up on, on that pedestal and being a part of that. I recognize that I've done that. I've done that to your family. And I ask the family to forgive Forgive me. Not treating you like normal people. And I know that was a 
been hard for you. Please forgive me. And uh, I love you too, and appreciate you, and appreciate what God and who you are in God. And thank you for coming today. Thank you, Brother Denny, for sharing. I just really, this, it was just, uh, what you shared bore witness to my heart. And I, but at the same time, I want to say I freely forgive you. Thank you that through the years, you know, even though you've shared the needs you did this morning that, and those things that you repented of, through the years I've gained so much in my spiritual life through your ministry. And I want to thank you and bless you for that. Thank you, brother. Blessings of grace to you today, Brother Denny. Sister Jackie. Yeah, I'm sure, like a lot of us, my heart is full of many things. But uh, you mentioned a number of times this morning about the character of God, and I really appreciated that. Thank you for emphasizing that. That ministered to me. I appreciate that. But I think also what I saw was you revealed to us once again Jesus, who's always been the centrality of your ministry. And I thank you for letting us see Jesus once again today, even more clearly than before. Thank you all for coming in for blessing our lives again, as you have so many times. And Jackie, I want to speak to you and thank you for standing by, Denny, and being such an example to us, uh, walking a road ahead of us that we haven't walked, and once again showing us how to walk it, and just using God's love to flow through you, and Christ's love, and just showing us the path to, to Christ. And I just thank you for shining for Him, and... And may we all continue to grow through this. I think we're all going to grow through this. That's exciting that we might be more like him tomorrow because of this. Well, that would be thrilling. And thank you all, the Kiniston children, for coming, standing beside your dad and mom and being so, just so clearly wanting to bless him. And that's just, that's incredibly blessing to us. And we sure do love you all. And Mainly we love the Lord together. Okay, yes. I know I'm not an elder, but I just wanted to publicly say how very much I love and respect my brother and honor him. And many of you don't even know me because there's so many new faces, but if it wasn't for his obedience when he first became a Christian... I would not be a Christian. And I just wanted to just publicly share my love and respect and honor for my brother. Amen. Bless you, sister. Thank you for sharing. Uh, We would like to, as a ministry team, um, stand together and uh, just uh, acknowledge, Brother Denny, that we we receive your apology and your confession today. We receive it and we release you and bless you in the name of Jesus. Bless you, our dear brother and your dear wife and your dear family. The Lord bless you and shine upon you and give you peace and joy. Amen. All right. Thank you, elders. Brother Denny has requested anointing of oil, and we feel like this would probably be an appropriate time to enter into that. The scriptures speak to us concerning anointing of oil, and it tells us in James 5, my dear brother Denny, take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, 
and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Brother Denny, I know I've shared this with you, that I have held this in my heart, that as the Lord blessed Job in his latter end, and his latter end was greater than the beginning, that that is my prayer for you. And here we have this in this context of anointing of oil, to consider the suffering affliction and patience of those who have endured in time past. And you have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. And we have in this passage also, confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that ye may be healed. My dear brother, you have confessed your fault. You have made bare your heart. And you have borne your heart to us. And we believe what more appropriate place and time than to anoint with oil you, my dear brother, in the name of the Lord, and believing the word of God, confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. So if the elders could come, all the elders could come, that would be such a blessing. Are you, are you okay right there on the sofa? Yes? We will gather around you. Yes, amen. Is that good? No, no, you stay right there on his side. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We, uh, yes, you may just stay seated, brother. We elders do want to pray with you, over you. But I know that it's the heart of everyone here today to join us in those prayers and to pray for you, brother. So if the congregation could rise with us and join in us and with us, as we beseech the throne of God and we anoint our brother in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, oh Lord, we anoint our brother Denny with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus, we lay, your, we lay our hands upon him, brother. And we ask in the name of Jesus that you lay your hand upon our dear brother. Your you, mighty physician's healing Thank grace you. and power upon our brother Denny. There is nothing too difficult for our Lord Jesus. Cancer is under the feet of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask in Jesus' name that you will touch our brother Denny with your healing hand and you will raise him up even as you did Job. And in his latter days, there will be greater blessing and glory and honor to Jesus Christ in his latter days than the beginning. Father, we thank you for our dear brother. We thank you for the servant of the Lord. And Father, we pray that you would restore him, that he can yet show forth the praises and glory of Christ all of his days in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we, we rejoice in the goodness of God and the, the holiness of God as we see this morning. And, and uh, we thank you for bringing our brother Denny today and to share his heart with us. And, and uh, now as we, we lay our hands on him and Pray for the healing for his physical body. We pray, God, that you would do a work in that physical body and strengthen him according to the, your purpose and your call on his life. Yes, Father, Lord. you know the whole situation here. And you know, Lord God, that there's work to be done. 
Yes. But we also recognize, Father, that you can work through, uh, that you work through men and, and not just one man, but oh God, would you somehow baptize all of us with the same spirit that you've baptized thy brother Denny with? Yes, Lord. Oh God. But we do bring his physical body here this morning and anoint that body yes, and pray Lord. for the healing of that body. According mm-hmm. to your will, so be it done, Father. Thank you, Blessed Jesus. be your name. Bless Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you know this morning as I opened my Bible, just plopped it open, and I read there, you led me to Hezekiah, Isaiah, where here was a man that was going to die. And you said, as you saw his sorrow, you heard his tears. You said, I give you 15 more years of life. God, I ask you to do it again. Lord, to do it again. You've, this is your character. Your word is given to us, Father. I pray that you would perform it again for Brother Denny. In the name of Jesus, for your glory and your honor. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lord, I too pray. Lord, we pray together for our dear brother. Lord, we ask that resurrection power of yours to surge through him, Lord. You live within him, Lord, and we pray that the same power that raised Christ from the dead would quicken his mortal body. Yes. Yea, even his, even, even the, uh, even the head of his, that is. In illness presently. Oh Lord, we call upon your name. We ask you to deeply minister to that. Lord, to him. In his ailment. Lord, we call upon your name. and Father, we lift him. We thank you that you're his everlasting father. And we pray that you would be a comfort to him. We ask you, Lord, that you would comfort him on every side. Like your word says in Psalms, Lord, you comfort us on every side. Lord, we pray that you, you also sit upon a throne of grace. and We pray your healing graces would be poured out upon him this morning. We pray that upon him. Lord, the healing graces of your... One of your graces is a healing grace, Lord. And a miraculous grace. And we pray that upon our brother this morning. We ask you, Lord, to minister deeply, Lord, to his physical body. Lord, we would desire that. We ask you for it. And we thank you in Jesus. Yes, fathers, we continue in prayer. We thank you, first of all, for the healing that you are already doing, Father, in all of our hearts, just by hearing these words, the grace of your healing, Father, and for the spiritual healing that Brother Denny has confessed that you have given him. What a miracle. What a loving God you are. And Father, by that same power, we in faith pray that physical healing would now be part of that package that you have for our brother and for us, Father. We love You. We trust You. We pray these things in faith, Father, for Thy glory and Thy honor forever and ever. It is about You, Father. Thank You, Lord. Thank You. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. The congregation may be seated. Sorry, Brother Denny, I messed up your beautiful hairdo. I didn't know. I bless you, brother. I felt the drops of oil coming down my head, and I was loving it. Praise God. I don't mind you pour oil on my head. Praise the Lord. God bless you, brother. If you have a little strength to stay a bit, we will have the congregation give opportunity to respond. But if you're done. Okay. Oh, I feel very relaxed. Okay, very well. You just stay seated there, and and, and praise the Lord. All right. All right. We could have this microphone. I just love sitting here looking at you all. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. All right, we want to give opportunity for the congregation to respond.
and bless our brother Denny and sister Jackie and their family. And this is a very precious family meeting here. And we would be blessed if you would honor the local church in uh, sharing with Brother Denny, giving them some deference perhaps or preference. But if God has laid something on your heart, we certainly don't want to limit it to, uh, to just that. So God, God bless you as we enter into this time of sharing. And Brother Denny and Sister Jackie will just stay seated up here and receive our words that we had to share with them to bless them. So my dear wife will go first. Yes, Brother Denny and Sister Jackie, I just want to bless you and thank you, and we love you so much. God bless you and your family. Thank you so much all for coming. Yes. Okay, we're going to have the uh, elders, Brother Mel and Brother Paul, uh, pass out the microphones. So uh, if you have something to share, raise your hand, and they will bring a microphone to you. And let us remember that there's probably many who would like to share. And I want to say that this is your opportunity to share. Uh, We don't anticipate a receiving line afterward to meet Brother Denny uh, personally uh, as he's weak in strength, as you saw. So this is your opportunity to share. So raise your hands and remember there's someone else who'd like to share as well. So let's mind the Lord. Bless you. Brother Denny, it's, it's good to see you and your wife and your family. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for what you've meant to me and what you've done in my life. And I'm here because of God and I'm here because of you. Um, you believed in me when I didn't believe in myself and when I didn't believe I can do the things that God was calling me to do. Um, but you did. And because of you, because of your family, because of your legacy, I'm here. And I'm serving God. And I want to thank you. Brother Danny and Sister Jackie, I just want to thank you both for coming here today. Um, I did a lot of reminiscing. We go back a long way. (laughs) And first of all, I want to say I forgive you. And I want to ask for your forgiveness for not praying for you like I should have. And I also want to thank you for teaching me about the cross. I thought back to my earlier years as a Christian, even before I ever came here to church, how you directed me to the cross and what it means to have an inner life with the Lord. And I want to thank you for that. I want to thank the family for coming today. I love you all, and I just pray God's blessing for you all. Brother Denny, you asked for forgiveness from the young people. Uh, I was a young person here while you ministered among us, and I was standing in the back and just really evaluating my heart. There was nothing. (laughs) There was nothing in my heart to forgive you for because all I found was honor and tremendous love, fondness, respect. Um, I am where I am in my Christian life largely because of your love for the Lord and your enthusiasm and your vibrancy for God. And that's always really inspired me. And, uh, yeah, you've tremendously impacted my life. I love you, brother. I love your family, your wife. Uh, I'm just uh, so grateful for the influence that you've had in my life. And I, can, I could speak for my family as well. Uh, my uh, mom and dad, you know, how your family inspired us and really believed in us and we were great friends. I, I just I just want to really thank you and bless you and want to tell you that we love you all. God bless you. As a family, we would like to say thank you for coming. We accept your apology. We love you. We're praying for you guys. Thank you so much for your years and years of ministry. And I too can say it's largely because of your ministry that we stand here today. And we love God and we're going on for God. And thank you so much for your your sacrifice. And we love your family. We're glad to see all of them here today as well. Brother Denny, do you remember... How many days I walked in this back door by myself. You were there. You loved me. You encouraged me. 
And I want to tell you, I was blessed by hearing you today when you talked about the healing in the family. I want to let you know we're right with you. We still have many things to work through. But, Danny, I want to thank you for taking time many times when I walked in that back door and just encouraged me. And your love that you always gave to me. And then especially, some of your children always took time to encourage me also. I want to thank you for that. Danny, we pray for you. God bless you. Thank you again. And may the Lord keep your hand over you. Well, I wouldn't have taken a million dollars to miss this service. Um, Carl would have loved to be here too, but he had to preach this morning, so he sends his love and his greetings. Um, I was very blessed just to hear you share. Very touched by all of this. Thankful that your children could be here. Having lived in your home for three years and being like a daughter, there's a part of us that, you know, as a child, we think Papa's perfect. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I accept your apology, and, and I, I realize we're not perfect, and, and I, I'm blessed by your humility and your confessions. And I just want to forgive you and, and bless you and and but I couldn't help but think of Hebrews 11 the chapter of faith and I guess I feel like you're in there and if God does choose to take you home I feel like because the world's not worthy of you and in some ways you know and I, and I have to say that you know I can identify with some of the things you said it did kind of upset me sometimes when people would put you on a pedestal because I know living in the glass house is not easy. And uh, and even now, like being in the ministry, what you said about the pressures. It's real. I take that as a challenge to learn to not make those same mistakes. So we just love you and pray for you and for all the family. I love you very much. Danny and Jackie for taking Esther under your wings and having her live there. And uh, uh, I guess what challenged me probably most this morning of your humility to confess and talking about the character of God. That's what happens if we if we fail in life. We ruin the character of God. But I just want to bless you abundantly. And thank you. And I'm so glad your family is all here. And, uh, yeah, just thank you. God bless you. Um, Brother Danny. Oh, Tim. My boy. <laughs> Thank you for being my friend at Stumps and for talking to me. Amen. And I'll be thankful to God for the rest of my life what I learned from you and answering all my questions. <laughs> what a joy. Bless you. Thank you, Brother Denny, for uh, leading me to the Lord. Uh, Thank you for the time uh, that you took. Uh, thank you, family, for letting your daddy go uh, out to Altona and uh, star out to Altona and Elmendorf, where uh, you led me to the Lord. And uh, thank you for uh, your work, um, your encouragement, your zeal uh, for the godly home uh, set that you did preach and uh, godly courtship. Uh, uh, Thank you. God has uh, God has uh, gotten much glory, I believe, through the tape ministry, through uh, 
those sermons that were preached that have gone out uh, all throughout the United States. I, I just want to thank you for laboring in the Word and for uh, through the years and for preaching uh, God's Word and uh, feeding the sheep. Thank you. I was thinking back as um, we moved here 18 years ago with many dreams and visions. And I have to confess that they're actually coming to fruition now. The Lord has put us through a school, too, of humility, confession of pride. These things don't happen by accident. What affected our churches wasn't an accident. I think it's because God loves us. I know it is. I can say I feel closer to my Lord today than I ever have in life. And it was through pain, suffering, and trials that I can give Him glory. But there's also healing. And I feel this is a part of the healing, Brother Denny, Sister Jackie, and family. It's a beautiful part of the healing that has been taking place in our church. I'm so excited that your whole family was here. It's a thrill. And I praise God for this, for all these events that happened. We can give Him glory. Jesus Christ and His work is more important than us. It's bigger than we are. Amen. And God has showed me that we have to get out of the way in order for Him to work. We need to lose our life in order to give God the true place in our hearts and to give Him glory and to give Him honor and to lift Him up. So I thank Him for these things. But I do say I do love you both, your family. You're dear to us. You've been part of our growing experience here. We used to always look forward to, if I can say, when you were, when you were here, Brother Danny, it was exciting to us to hear the Word of God and the zeal and exuberance that you have. And I'm thankful for those opportunities to sit under that, as well as the experiences we've gone through here together. I just want to thank you, Brother Denny, for humbling yourself this morning, for sharing with us as a family. I just want to say I love you. Thank you. It has truly blessed me. The verse the Lord gave me this morning is in Matthew 18, chapter 3. It says in very... And Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever there shall so humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. I bless you both. Um, I just want to take this time to bless you, Brother Danny. Your family has been very special to our family. Mm-hmm. I, just, I was saying I want to take this time to bless you and thank you for the many messages you've brought to us young people, um, Bible schools. I want to tell you, I, my life will never be the same. From the many Bible school sermons that I heard, from you and your godly example. Um, something I've learned from watching you is how you serve. You you just go around and blessing everybody. And and as I look around here, you've touched a lot of people's lives. And I thank the Lord for your family. This week I've been thinking a lot about the um, the need for encouragement in our lives. And uh, something that came to my mind as I've been pondering that was, uh, um, I don't even know how long ago it was or, or, or how old I was, but I wasn't 
more than 12, I don't believe, when um, Christina Lang was sent to as an ambassador of the family just to give me a word of encouragement from you all. And I don't even remember the specific uh, word that it was, but it was just such an encouragement to me just to know uh, that somebody has um, taken time to note and bless um, a young boy. And, uh, and that was a blessing to me. And I just want to bless you all uh, for your encouragement to me over the years, uh, being a second father to me, and, um, and just the, the many, many blessings that, that we have shared together. Um, thank you. And just a, um, been thinking a lot about the uh, words in James that talk about counting it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations and trials that come upon you and um, and just to just to see the uh, the blessing that comes when we allow ourselves or allow God to work in our hearts through those things God bless you we love you thank you I just can't help but think of that trip out west that you made about 14 years ago and the time that you spent in our home it changed my life. I think one of the biggest factors was seeing young people who were living this way and who were happy. I'll never forget it. Thank you for giving it yourselves. And Jackie Cho, I want to tell you, you've become such a friend to me over the last few months, just her. Our contact back and forth, your emails brighten my day every time. I want you to know I love you. Brother Danny, I've known you my entire life, and I want you to know that I love you. I love your family. You're very dear to me. If it wasn't for your influence on my family, we probably wouldn't be Christians. And my prayer through all of this is that God would open our eyes to see what he wants to do in all of our hearts. Thank you, brother. God bless you, Steve. May he give you your Brother Denny, I want to thank you very much for the many times I came to your house and cooked for you. You never told me if it was good or bad, but, <laughs> but I'll never forget the uh, Christmas. It was you good. <laughs> The Christmas, you let me come to your house when Brother Emmanuel was there. I don't know how many years ago that was. It was on Christmas Eve I came to your house. I'll never forget that. And I want to thank you very much for every Saturday morning you and Sister Jackie were here praying with us. And you would, if I wasn't there, you'd, you'd mention it to me the next Sunday. Where were you? I want to thank you for everything you've done and how humble you were this morning. And I just pray that what you said this morning settles in each and every one of our hearts. You've, we all make mistakes, yes, but if we didn't have Jesus, we'd have nothing. And if it's, it's all about our Creator that we're going to spend an eternity with. And thank you, Brother Jenny, for your whole family, what they've done for me. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much for sharing this morning. And I want you to know I for, completely forgive you for anything there. I want you to know, too, that Maybe it looks different from your perspective than from ours. You know, as I listened to your many messages, I didn't hear any philosophy. I heard the word of the Lord. And it has blessed me many times. And I just want to say thank you so much that you have allowed the Lord to speak through you. Uh, all the messages that you have preached, I, I'm not throwing them out. I love them. And I just praise God that uh, he's had this little perfecting touch. Taken out the, the little bit of humanity that was in those messages. And has left them more beautiful than before. And I just want to say thank you to, to your family. I uh, realize that many times we have maybe put you, your family under pressure. and We're sorry about pressure.
pressurizing you. Realize that it was a difficult place to stand sometimes. We love you. We care for you. And we just want to be, uh, I, I don't know how to put this, just one with you. We are, we are called to be one in Christ, aren't we? And uh, I think this is a beautiful time of sharing hearts. And, and uh, we just love you. We want you to know that. Thank you. I just want to say a little bit. Thank you, Brother Denny. Thank you for being faithful this morning. God heard. We heard. We all accept and we forgive you. And we love you so much. We feel very close to you, to your family, to each one of you young people sitting over here. We love you. We always have. We have lots of special memories. And Jackie, I love you. I've been praying for you. Destiny. Destiny. She's my friend. Brother Denny, I want to say that I love you, I will pray for you, and God bless you. God bless you, Destiny. You made my day, girl. Oh, you give me a hard day. That, that's worth a million dollars. Thank you for that blessing. Brother Denny, Sister Jackie, I just want to say thank you from the depth of my heart. I remember being a confused young person in the colony, putting on headphones after supper, sticking your tapes into my Walkman and finding purpose for my life. And I think of the scripture, it's ringing in my heart that I was reading this week where it says, Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed and I see a picture of that this morning, and it's very, very beautiful. And in my ignorance back then, I had no idea the sacrifices that your family was going through to make those messages happen, to allow to come them to places where your human voice would have not been allowed to come in. And I want to thank you, children, from the depth of my heart. I had no idea what you were sacrificing, and Sister Jackie. I want to thank you, and I, I believe in those 15 years, and I believed through all these trials that God was far from finished. Amen. And I just rejoice in the beautiful picture that, that God is painting, and yes, we only see it dimly, but I believe God is not finished, and we will see Him still deep at work. I want to take this wonderful opportunity. Um, I've been here since 1994, so it's been 18 years. And Brother Denny and Sister Jack, you have a tremendous impact upon my life. I cannot even begin to tell you. I knew nothing about godly living. I knew nothing when I got here. I didn't know about godly courtship. I never heard of anything like that. I didn't know. I didn't know about. There's a lot of things I didn't know about. I didn't know how a Christian family should even function. <laughs> I learned a lot in my later years. But praise God, at least I learned something. And I can't erase the past of my life. But God in His grace has given me a second chance. And I just want to let you know that your ministry is reaching far and wide around the world. I minister with a lot of blind, visually impaired people in African countries and in India. And we're getting your messages into schools, the blind, schools for the blind in India in these various countries. We, have, we are doing these Envoy Bible Players. Your, minis, your messages on the incomparable Christ will be on there. And Godly Courtship will be on there. Godly Home Series is going to be on there. And it's going to make a difference in a lot of African countries among the blind people there. We are really and that we are just so blessed that God would do this. And we are lifting up a godly standard there in Africa among the blind people and in India and in Sri Lanka and in other countries. So 
Please continue to pray for us. And I love you and I pray for you. And I'm so glad that God, by his Holy Spirit, brought me to this part of the country. He just brought me here by his Holy Spirit. I didn't know I was going to come here, but God brought me here. And I've been here for 18 years. And I just thank God for this wonderful, godly ministry. You have blessed so many people, including me. So God bless you. Brother Denny, yes. uh, Sister Jackie and your family, 13 years ago, we got a, a hold of the Godly Home series, the first one, and you were redoing it a couple of years later. And as a, a young idealistic pastor, it was so joyful, it was so encouraging to hear a, a dad and a grandfather preaching these things that I just didn't have the courage to preach. Well, maybe I got a little too much courage because I preached myself right out of the denomination. They wouldn't have anything more to do with us. And we wandered around a while because we weren't quite ready to put on a head covering. We landed in Texas. And I was listening to a tape I've heard uh, your son's tape on non-resistance. Daniel, you preached a message on that. Then I was listening to another tape. I think it was from Dale Heisey on Recovering the Apostolic Vision. I was so struck by one of the points there. Galassenheit, is that the word? The German word? I leaned over to hit rewind. And as I was doing that, I hit a truck head on, 65 miles an hour. It was just what I needed. <laughs> and I laid there in the hospital, diagnosed with a broken neck. And about three in the morning, while my wife was sitting by my side, Jackie, it's been such a joy just to see you being a picture of the church. Loving and adoring and standing by your head. And there was my wife holding my hand and I was awaiting surgery and very uncertain and not sure where we were going to fellowship. They came in and said that uh, I was healed. There was no sign of a broken neck. So I went home still very sore and I laid there in bed wondering what to do. One by one, as I couldn't move, I listened to tape after tape and the head covering came around and non-resistance came around the security of the believer, not unconditional security. One by one, all these cardinal doctrines I'd held as a mainstream young pastor at a seminary. The Bible was established and man's doctrines died. But my house wouldn't sell. <laughs> we were stuck in Texas. And I remember calling you. And, and you, were, you were busy. But I got a call back later on that evening. And I have a verse for you here, Brother Denny. This is from Hebrews, Hebrews 5, and then I'll finish my little story and my thanks. Hebrews 5, 7 says, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard and that he feared. Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And I began to share with you my story and my desire to come and be a part of this fellowship. I believe God had called us and we had settled some things in our souls. And my wife was wearing a pink bandana as a head covering. and We were on our way, but our home wasn't selling. And I began to feel condemned and the sins of my, my ministry were, were haunting me. And you asked me, you said, Jeff, are there any cornfields in Texas? I thought, where is he going with this? He said, you find the closest cornfield and pitch those thoughts into it. And you come under the blood of Jesus and you come to our fellowship just as you are. And I didn't know what to say. I had some other hurts and I tried to fumble through them, and then you began to weep on the phone. And then I began to weep. 
And we just cried for about 10 or 15 minutes and didn't get one word out. And Brother Daddy, there was somebody who did the same thing in his ministry. We just read about it. Thank you for being like Jesus today. When we can't find words, we can just cry. We can just weep. And sometimes that's the deepest ministry there is. And here I am ten years later and four more children have been born since we've lived here in Pennsylvania. And you're still ministering to me, brother, the way you did 13 years ago when I didn't know what to do. Because you're allowing yourself to be a broken man and to weep. Thank you for letting the Holy Spirit intercede through you with groans at work. can't express. God bless you. I love you, brother. I just want to thank you for the godly example that you've been in my life for the last 21 years. I remember the first time we met Alex and Sue Marini's house. We were scared to death. <laughs> but you soon put us at ease. And God began to change our heart and our family. And I want to thank you for that. And I want to thank you for being there for us through the years, through the many trials. And you're still being a godly example to me today through humility and allowing God to use you. I want to be like you, Denny. As you follow Christ, I want to follow Christ. Thank you. God bless you, Jim. Good morning, Brother Denny. We have not met. I'm Bob Vance, and this is my wife, B. We're members of Gideon International. And I came today because this is one of the churches that we have prayed for for a long time. We have about 70 churches in our camp, Lancaster East. And I came today, uh, I had no expectations of what I was going to hear. We have heard for years, and I've met many charity members throughout the time that I've been a Gideon. And we've met on the pathways and byways. Your group has been passing out scriptures, and my group has been passing out Bibles. And it was a few weeks ago, I was in a local restaurant, and I met a fellow who goes here, Ben Stolzfus. And I thought, well, you know what? It's uh, clearly time for me to visit charity. And it is by divine providence that we came today to hear and see a biblical rest uh, restoration within the church. A time when elders came together to uh, discipline someone who perhaps was out of step yes. and then restored them in a yes. biblical way. Right. And that indeed is honoring. It's only the third time in my entire life that I've been in the service where that has happened. I thank you, charity members, for doing such a thing. Right, and for you, Brother Denny, many Amen. years of good ministry ahead of you. Amen. God bless. Thank you. Brother Denny, Jackie, I love you. Um, it's been um, 17 years now since this little Catholic girl <laughs> heard about you because of the Godly Home series and came out here because of you. Yes. And um, it gave me comfort to know that there was somebody a little bit more like me a biker, <laughs> someone who had been through some rough times and um, but wanted to go on with God. I want to thank your family for embracing me and my family, um, letting us stay in your home when we first came out here for several weeks. Your, fa your children, letting Heather be in, allowing us the privilege of being Elizabeth in your wedding. We still have the dress. You became a role model for Heather, and she is very much like you. She is an angel. She's not here today. And um, the times you babysat for my children, and Daniel, your inspiration, encouragement, Samuel re reaching out, and Christy, your warm smiles. I love each of you. 
And um, I wanted to um, let you know, Danny, I do forgive you. But you gave me a vision. You gave me something to look at. And I just wanted to just stand here and thank you personally. And thank you. you're very, very loved. All of you, every one of you. Jackie, you too. Thank you for showing me your realness and your vulnerability as a woman, a wife, and a mother, and as a Christian. Brother Danny, I uh, don't really know that I have too much to say, but just that I was looking forward to greeting you and embracing you today once again. And uh, since maybe that won't happen, I just had to get up and just say that I do appreciate you, brother. I want to thank you, Denny and Jackie, for all that you meant to us during the years. And I just want to bless you for all the many sermons that you preached, and especially uh, the teaching on the spirit of grace rather than the spirit of law. It just meant so much to me. God bless your family. Well, Brother Denny, um, my wife and I would like to bless you too. We love you. Um, I do can echo what Nancy said too, that all the, uh, your tapes came into a my life or where you probably couldn't have come and uh, we're largely here because of a lot of your messages and Brother Moses and, and all the, the ministers here and so I, I want to bless this church but also bless you brother for, uh, for what you have done in your life and what you have done for Christ and uh, what your, you and your family have been impacting in our lives so God bless you brother Yes, Brother Denny and Sister Jackie, I also want to just share with you, um, I know you don't know this, and probably none of your children either, I didn't realize either all the pressures, but we gladly forgive you, and I just, I used to be very alone where I grew up and seeking reality and your messages and the messages from the people here have meant so much to me. I'm here because of that. And I know it's not just because um, of you personally, but because of God. And I give him glory for all of that. And I just, I'm so thankful for godly lives to point me to Jesus. And I want to thank you for that and thank each of you children for giving your papa in that way. It means so much to me. I love you, Brother Denny. Thank you for all you've done for me, for my wife and for my family. For my part, Brother Denny, you didn't need to say what you did this morning. But I accept it. I remember so well your words to me so many times. I would ask you something. And you would say, well, Brother Mark, you just pray about it. I thank you for that. Brother Denny, thank you for being Mark's friend. Not only a disciple or but a friend. I appreciate that. It's been a blessing to me over the years that He's had you. I love you, Jackie. Remember the walk talks. Thank you both for your example to us and for continuing to be that beautiful example of humility. I love you. Brother Denny and Sister Jackie, I just this is a joy to my heart and an answer to the longing of my heart to see see your reality and in the, in the, your heart poured out for us so it uh, uh, brings joy and peace seeing you sharing from your heart and we receive that and bless you and we you have been in our lives such a, an, um, a helpful guiding in our 
a vision, giving us direction, giving us a purpose for our family, helping us to see God's plan for us and courage to reach out in faith. And we're very thankful. We love you. Danny, I just want to thank you to, uh, for being faithful to God's assignment. And I pray that all of us as listeners will now be faithful to what God has spoken through you to us and that there will be much lasting fruit from this time for his glory. Yes, I, sorry I jumped the gun earlier. I didn't know there was going to be a sharing time and I didn't want to miss out on saying what I had. And in my haste and nervousness, I left a very important thing out. And that is Jackie. I also highly respect you. You always stood by your man. You always have. But since the beginning of his illness, you have so lovingly cared for him. And being in Indiana so far from me, I just want to thank you for taking such good care of my brother. I love you. Okay, are we finishing here? Okay. Yes, let me just get up here a little bit. Yes. Just express my, my... Yeah, okay. I just want to express my gratitude. I, I must admit, I feel a little bit funny for you to say all those nice things about me. I do. It makes me feel a little bit funny. But I do. I understand you needed to say those things and and I thank you for such kind words that you would say to me and I thank you for your forgiveness I received that several times I heard your word <laughs> oh, these, this technology oh. <laughs> but I'm very grateful and I receive your your words uh, of, of, of affirmation and uh but I, I do want to, I want to pull this thing, in a, in a good right place here, if I can, before I close this out. But I, I want to, I feel as I'm sitting and listening for a little while, I, that I need to, to say something to, 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 to guide this in a, in a good way here, that we leave thinking, the right kind of thoughts. As we leave, I, but I want to say this to you all, and I think you'll understand what I'm saying right now. See, uh, church, you know what little bitty <laughs> what little bitty glimpses of Jesus that you saw today. You only saw that. Because it's the purpose of the incarnation. It's why Jesus became flesh. He came, he took upon himself flesh and came down into this earth and he died. He went to that cruel cross so that divinity could dwell in humanity and that's what Jesus wants he not just for me for every one of us that divinity would dwell and manifest itself in our hurting world. As you go through the world, God wants to manifest His loving heart, His divinity to our hurting world around them. And that's all you saw today. You didn't see any man. That wasn't a man. It, it's, it's God dwelling inside of us. That's all it is. We just need to stay low. Stay low to the ground. God wants to live His life through His He's longing to get His life out to a world that's hurting. He's longing to get beyond that. 
And I want to just leave that with you. I, I, I can't bear any more of this. But I, we do need to leave. But I want to leave that. It's, it's you know, to, to keep our focus right there. God is so jealous over his son. For the exaltation of his son. That his son's beautiful life would be seen by everyone else. And that the focus is, is on him, on him, on him, on him, always on him. And that's the way I want to leave this meeting completely. I mean, I, with all my heart, I, I, it would hurt my heart if you would all just go home and talk about me. Just go home and talk about Jesus. Amen. That's all I want you to do. I beg you to do And then I let you please let me. Old men can get away with these things, you know. <laughs> Could we uh, turn to page 260 and have a song leader lead that uh, as we come to a close here? I just want to say, let's just pray before they leave. Father, thank you for this meeting this morning, thank you for bringing our dear brother Denny and his family back this morning. Thank you, Father, for this sweet time in heavenly places. We do worship you and glorify you. We know it's because of your work and your grace working in and through man. Yes, divinity in humanity. Father, now we pray a blessing on Denny and Jackie and his family. Again, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. Brother Jeremy. All right, can we go ahead and stand? Number 260, not I, but Christ be honored, loved, exalted. Mm, Not I, but Christ be honored, loved, exalted.
Christ, my every wish fulfilling, Christ only Christ, my all in all to be. All share with God for that Why is Father, we thank you for working in our hearts. Continue, Lord, we pray. As we release our brother Danny and his family at this point, we just thank you for meeting with us. Father, we pray that healing would continue to go forth even as it has begun to every heart, every hurting soul. Everyone that we have caused pain, may their healing be there. May there be found healing for that pain that we Either the elders or a church have caused. Father, we pray that in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you for listening. We hope this message has blessed you. If you would like additional messages or a catalog, please visit our website.